Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Penny Pincher Firearms. Just making this a real quick kind of rant video. Uh, today I was doing some reloads and I had a bad thing happen. You probably saw the title card. My, uh, my hand press broke. So yeah, I'm not very happy about that. I'm actually pretty frustrated about it. Uh, I've already emailed Lee uh, to find out if they will replace it. They should. Everything they have is under a two-year warranty. Uh, I just bought this back in September, so... Uh, hopefully that'll all work out and I can get a new one in the mail soon. Uh, but I know how these things can go and it can take a while. So I'm not looking forward to that process if it does take a long time because I like reloading. It saves me a lot of money. So hopefully, Lee, please make sure you're doing everything that you can to help me. Because I love you guys. Don't make me not love you guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of a fanboy. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, I was reloading a 7.5 by 55, and if you know what this is, this is a full resizing die, and it got stuck in there because it's broken, so I can't even use it right now. And I know what people are saying, you should get a bench press, blah, blah, blah. I travel a lot. I really can't have a bench press right now. Uh, maybe when I finally find a place where I want to set down roots, I can use a bench press, but not right now. So I prefer to use a hand press. It's not that hard to use. Typically, it works reasonably well until it snaps. And that was pretty loud when it snapped, too. Um, I, was, I was pretty surprised by it. I actually thought a primer went off, and I was like, these are all fired rounds. There's no way. So that was kind of a weird thing. Uh, another thing I, I just wanted to kind of go over is some things that I've been encountering on forums and occasionally at the range. And that's people who, and I'm, I'm guilty of it as, as well in some cases, but not to the level uh, that these people are. Uh, I, I'll use basically the examples that I get from shooting at the range. I shoot a lot of old guns, but I'm not a very old guy. I'm 28 years old. Uh, I've gotten into the actual collection of these firearms as recently as 2011. I've been into guns for a very long time. I know a lot about gun history. I know... I knew a lot about the guns that I bought before I even bought them. I researched them before I purchased. So it, it, these things are important to me. But I will run into older guys, maybe late 50s, early 60s, sometimes even in their 70s at the range, who think just because they're older than me, they know more about the guns that I actually own. And that bugs me because it's almost as annoying as a tactical crowd. But these are guys that they're usually so set in their ways that if you can even prove them wrong, doesn't matter. They're still right because they're older than me, therefore they know more. Uh, that always bugs me. And one example is when I shoot my Norwegian Krag, I always get people going, oh, it was converted from 3040? No, it wasn't converted from 3040. Oh, well, all Krags were made in 3040. No, they weren't. Crags were made actually in three different rounds until the 1940s, when they were actually made in a fourth round. The first crags were an 8x5 8 rimmed Danish, which was actually used in rolling block rifles before it was ever even used in the crag. It was a black powder round. The second round that was used was a 30 USA, or the 3040 crag. And then the third round, 6.5x55, which was used by the Norwegians and the Swedish. Uh, the Swedish used it in their, their Mausers, and the Norwegians used it in their crags. Their crag is actually uh, not super, like super different from the U.S. crag, but it's different enough that it's very distinguished compared to the U.S. crag. There was no rechambering. Nobody put a sleeve in the barrel. Nobody put a sleeve in the chamber to allow for 6.5. It's a totally different chamber. The bolt head is even different. You have a smaller bolt head on the Nor Norwegian crag than you do the U.S. crag. So... I don't go on these tirades on these older guys, but I will try to inform them. But in most cases, they just get angry or get frustrated with me because I won't listen to them because uh, I'm some stupid kid. But I know what I'm talking about. I love these guns. I've done a lot of research into these firearms. Uh, they're important to me. This whole hobby is extremely important to me. So I just wanted to, to bring that up. And I, I have to say it's worse on forums and worse on YouTube. Uh, mostly because people have that that veil of anonymity on the internet and you know I'm kind of guilty of it too where I've gone and had a, 
a bit of an argument with people about things like black powder being an explosive and uh, the VZ-58 being striker fired versus the, the hammer being that rod that's essentially a striker. Um, it, in the end, those are semantic arguments. Uh, but when it comes to things like actual historical facts of uh, a round being, you know, a rifle being chambered for a certain round versus another, it's very frustrating. It's very important that you don't push what you think you have as knowledge because you could be wrong. Um, I could be wrong, and I am wrong often on a lot of things, and you know what? I accept that. I actually, um, I, I encourage you guys, my viewers, to tell me something about me being wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with that. As long as you have evidence, uh, it's, it's cool. I'm happy with that. Uh, just, you know, don't, don't be an a-hole. Don't like that, because I try not to be either. Um, so yeah, it, it's just something that it, it's been bugging me lately. I didn't bring it up in my range report video just because I didn't feel it was, you know, that was a happy moment I got to share with uh, some people. But I did have an older fellow uh, comment about my K31. He had met me before, and then he was talking to me about my crags because he'd seen me shooting my crags before. And that's when, th this guy was maybe like 65 years old, and he starts telling me about my crags uh and he insisted that my my norwegian crag had to have been chambered in 3040 originally uh he insisted that norway had springfield make crags for them which makes no sense because my rifle was made in kongsberg norway um if it was made by springfield i'm pretty sure springfield would have marked him um so that's just completely untrue and he was getting on my nerves. Uh, I didn't show it to him, but I, I insisted that no, my rifles were made, you know, I have all three. One was made in Copenhagen, another one was made at, in Kongsberg, and another one was made at Springfield. That's it. That, that's just, these are facts. These are things that you can actually check based on markings on the guns. But uh, he wasn't he wasn't having it, and he essentially did that whole thing where he's just like, well, I've been doing this for years. Uh, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you're just a kid. And that was really his attitude. Was you know you're you're like twenty something, aren't you? You don't know what you're talking about. You'll find out someday. And I, I tried not to give him any attitude on my end, um, but I'm sure that I had some tone to my voice that was probably irritating him as well. So it, it wasn't the most pleasant conversation because the last time I talked to him, he was actually quite nice. Uh, we only talked briefly and he just kind of commented, oh, nice crags, that was it. Uh, so, yeah. But I'm getting kind of sick of that. Uh, it's almost as bad as the tactical crowd. Uh, tactical crowds can be worse when it comes to shooting modern guns because they'll, you know, jive on you about having the wrong optics or you need optics for your gun there's no other way you can shoot accurately unless you have optics uh what are you going to do in a combat situation because that's what's happening to me every day as i'm in a combat situation so yeah sorry for my my tone in this video but uh i'm not having the best day with this having happened um i was looking forward to making about 100 rounds not just of uh, 7.5 by 55, but some 30-40 crag. Now that's not going to happen, so it's a little frustrating for me. Uh, I used to have a uh, a Lee Classic loader for my 6.5, and I could have made some rounds for that, but that has since disappeared into the black hole that is my garage. So, yeah, <laughs> that's that's what's going on there. So. Uh, I guess the last thing I should bring up is people judging people for having cheap guns. Uh, if you're if you're like me, you shoot a lot of cheap guns. Uh, you might see people at the range; they had enough money to buy themselves, you know, a uh, 1895 Nagant revolver. And you know what? That's cool. You know, you had a hundred bucks laying around, and you thought, "Hey, I'm going to buy a handgun," and you were able to find ammunition for one of these. Uh, good for you. Um, uh, I'd like to know where you're finding the ammo right now because it's nearly impossible to find. But I, I've run into people, even range masters, at the shooting range who will comment on the fact that 
I'm shooting the Nagant revolver. Like, for some reason, I'm I'm suddenly subhuman because I'm shooting the the cheap gun. Um, but honestly, if you get the right ammo for these, they're not bad. And then if you do enough work on them, they're really good. Uh, you know, the the single action trigger on this now is pretty nice. Uh, I've done some work on it. I've accurized it. I've cleaned up some of the metal, so it's not doesn't have as many tooling marks so it's a lot smoother I reblued a lot of it so but people who who do that they may not see me again shooting this they don't realize that I shoot higher quality guns like there is a big difference in quality between a P08 Luger and an 1895 Nagant and so they'll immediately judge me based on the type of firearm I'm shooting not realizing that I actually have like really nice guns, but you know what? I like to shoot these cheap old junkers. It's kind of fun. It's like having an old junker car that you keep alive. I used to have a 74 Beetle. I used to do that and <laughs> keep it alive. I sold it because it became frustrating, but you know, it's, it's something that is fun for me. So please, please do not don't ruin my fun by making a bad comment about my gun. Uh, and please, don't do it to other people. It's just so rude. You know, uh, especially if somebody has kids with them, or they're taking their girlfriend out. You know, maybe they want to impress their girlfriend. That's cool. Whatever. Don't down on his gun. It's like downing on something else that he has. You know, it, it's just not cool. So, you know, just respect each other. Respect each other the range. Just be happy that everybody's enjoying the hobby and you know, share in that and share your stuff. Uh, just, if you ever watched uh, Briscoe County Jr., there's this guy named Pete and he's crazy about people touching his guns and he calls it Pete's Peace. And he's like, you touch Pete's Peace and gets all crazy. Don't be that guy. <laughs> be, be willing to share. Have fun with your friends and make new friends on the range, even if it's just for a few hours while you're there. It's always a fun thing, you know? So yeah, respect each other, respect each other's firearms, respect each other's tastes, and just have a good day at the range. And uh, you know, I think everybody will be a lot happier. So just remember guys, a good gun and a good time doesn't have to cost a pretty penny.